here with newly acquired Pales guard, CJ McCullough. When you hear Pales guard, CJ McCullough, what comes to your mind? It's gratitude, man. Like the journey, understanding the journey that I've gone through to get to this point. You know, having a, you know, nine-year career in the NBA so far. You know, nine and a half, basically nine is almost over. Being able to to transition to a team um, in New Orleans, being able to experience a new culture, um, new chemistry, a new team. It takes some some getting used to seeing the mm-hmm. colors. You know, mm-hmm. I gotta get I gotta get new colorways for my shoes. I gotta get my family new gear, but. Uh, I'm just thankful and I have a, a lot of gratitude to be here. You know, when you wrote your thank you to Portland, one of the things you put in there uh, was, I wanted to be in New Orleans. And there's been a narrative about guys being in New Orleans. What was it with you that, that told you, you know what, this is somewhere I want to be and somewhere that I want to grow? I think it was a combination of things. Um, ready for change, uh, looking forward to embracing a new challenge, being in a new city, you know, having to adjust. Obviously the talent on the team, the roster, you know, B.I., Big Fella, D. Graham, Herb, Zion when he comes back, being able to understand the potential that they have, but also understanding that my role would change significantly. You know, playing alongside Dane for so long um, was great. I was able to experience a lot of things. I was able to learn, I was able to win. But now I'm playing against B.I. where I'm like the big homie now, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little older, um, more experienced, but I can also learn from him while teaching him some things. And I think I was just looking forward to that challenge. And, you know, historically, you know, my parents have always told me, go where you want it, go where you need it. Mm. Um, be able to find that, that, that combination and that balance. And this is a place where I was wanted. This is a place where I was needed. And as I said, it was mutual admiration. You know, once I figured out I was probably going to be leaving Portland, you know, I started looking at teams, looking at rosters, watching games on League Pass differently than I would normally watch right. games in League Pass. Like envisioning myself actually playing with other teams for the first time in my career, I had never done that before. And when I envisioned myself playing here, I had my dad watch a couple games. I had my my mom, my wife, my brother watch a couple games. And I was like, you think I fit in there? And once we came to the conclusion that they felt like I did, my agent felt like it was a good situation. Then we began to talk about, all right, mm-hmm. what does this look like? When does the transition start if I, if I go there? Um, can my wife practice here? You know what I mean? Like, you know, looking at the family logistics of where will we stay, obviously understanding, you know, I got a son who's a month old, like how does, how does he transition? When does he finish his shots? So I, that's how I started thinking even before the trade was done because uh, I didn't want to have to be on the scramble. Mm-hmm. You, you talked about the, the transition, and I know as a player, you understand the, hu- the human aspect of, of right. being traded, but this is also your first time dealing with being traded. Right. What is the what has the last week been like? Not just for you, but also for for your family. It's an emotional roller coaster. Um, just highs and lows. Obviously excited about the transition, but also thinking about you know, I came here by myself. Like I left my wife behind. I left my son behind. I put a lot of stress and pressure on her. Um, used to me being there. So just kind of you know, that's the that's the hard part. You know, being away from them, but. Basketball is what it is. You just transition. You go hoop. You try to learn what you can learn. Uh, get more acclimated with your teammates, the staff. Get used to the drive. Figuring out, you know, restaurants and all that stuff. I can, I can do that on the fly. But I was just more so worried about my wife um, during these times and you know making sure she was okay. And then all, the, all the things I left behind. You know, I, mean, I don't have my car. I don't have my dog. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the little stuff. It's the stuff that you take for granted right. that you don't, you don't have anymore. And it's like I say, it's first world problems. But the, the teammates that I left behind, the staff that I left behind, that's nine years of relationships, you know what I mean? So that was hard, um, but it's a part of the business and a part of my transition. And, you know, through some of these struggles, through some of these uncomfortable moments, that's when you, you experience the biggest growth. And I'm just thankful to, to, to be able to, to go through these types of experiences. And my transition and experience was different than most players because I was involved in the process. So I'm thankful for that. You talked about your nine-year relationships with everything that you were able to develop in Portland. And now you close that chapter and you open a new chapter here um, in New Orleans. When you heard of Willie Green and you talked to different players about him, what was your perception about him prior to coming to New Orleans? And now that you've been here and you've had a couple of practices and a few games under your belt, what has stood out to you about Coach Willie Green? No, I mean, everything everybody said about him was true. 
You know what I mean? And I think Chauncey talked about it, your reputation beats you to the door. And I think he, he has a tremendous reputation for doing things the right way. Family man, God fearing man, uh, a good coach who wants the best out of you, will challenge you when he needs to, but also understands uh, how to make the game fun. You know, as a, as a former player, he understands that these are the dog days of the season. He understands that, you know, having started off one and 12, that he could have lost his team, but he kept them focused, kept them engaged, kept them fighting and on the same page, but they were able to turn the page and kind of move forward and have a great turnaround. And I think that just goes to show the type of person he is and, and how he appreciates the little things, mm -hmm. you know, making small gains every day, small progress, better than no progress. And I think he's had that mentality and that mindset, and I've enjoyed the transition. For those that aren't familiar with C.J. McCullough, right, what can Pels fans expect from you every time that you step on that floor? I just go compete, man. Um, I go compete. I do things the right way. I try to lead by example. I'm a vocal when I need to be. And uh, I want to win more than anything. I think that's that's historically what I've done. That's historically what I've been good at. Um, and I think I bring that uh, to this team, understanding what it takes to be successful, understanding how to be a professional every day. And I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, win or lose, 10 points, 6 points, 30 points. I'm the same every day. I, I have the same mentality. And I never take this game for granted because um, of how I was raised, where I come from, and what I've gone through to get to this point from injuries to not playing, to hitting game winners, to missing game winners. Uh, I've, I've experienced a lot of you know what this game has to offer and I, I'm thankful for it and I don't take it for granted. Last question. Today I saw you in shoot around, kind of stop shoot around and walk through something offensively, trying to put guys in the right spot, which speaks to your leadership. How long do you think it'll take you for you fully comfortable being the best version of C.J. McCollum here in New Orleans? Yeah, I'm getting there slowly. Um, as I play more games, as I get more practices, I get more familiar and comfortable with spacing, who's cutting, who's not, uh, where Big Fella likes the ball at. Uh, definitely shouldn't have six turnovers tonight. <laughs> uh, but I think I, I told my family I just need about five games because um, mm -hmm. that means I'm getting practices in between. Obviously, this is a back-to-back, -back, so this will be four, and then Thursday will be five, and then I'll have the break to really study the playbook to really kind of go through things on my flights. Um, so I say five games and then I'll be close to close to my, my natural form. But the hard part is learning all the plays. Uh, basketball is like you figure out, like as you play, you figure out where to get in at, where you fit in at. Um, but some of the play calls is still going to be tough. It'll take me a few weeks um, to get them. I'll have the, the main sets down, but some of those those counters and those mm -hmm. those other options out of the plays and like why do we split here? It'll take me a little bit of time, but I just think I think I just need about five games before I'm super comfortable. Yeah, man, and you know, brother, you already know how happy I am to have you here, man. Yeah, I appreciate you. Know. It's good to see you, brother.